Hey, I'm Alfred. And I'm Chris. It is Thursday, and of course, this is Why Wait Till Sunday. Probably a top five midweek DFS college football show. All right, we are at week 12, Chris. Um, good to see your face, but I am tired. I, this is a bit of a grind here coming down to the finish line. Yeah, it's it's a grind. Um, you know, each week we get some scrub who helps take down a GPP. So hopefully we can identify that scrub this week. I'd love to identify that scrub. And in the interest of time, without further ado, let's uh, let's pull up the slate here. Um, you know, preparing for this already, I've noticed that um, you know DraftKings just freaking loves. Actually, it should be Week Twelve, but it is Week Twelve. Uh, DraftKings freaking just loves the Big Ten, and we're gonna have to talk about that. But uh, first up, I'll let you go first. A lot of times I go first, and it ends up being that you get the crappy game. So I'm gonna let you go first, and maybe it'll it'll play out a little bit better. Take us through uh, Wake Forest Clemson. Yeah, so this is a pretty interesting matchup. Um, the total here is 57, which is probably the highest Clemson total that we've seen. Wake Forest comes in with a really good offense. Clemson has really good defense. This is going to basically determine whether or not DJU is d dust or not quite dust yet. So <laughs> I, I, I'm really interested in this ACC showdown because I think Wake Forest is a better team, but Clemson is favored by four and a half currently in the market, so – there there's some interesting plays in this game. Yeah. I don't get the Clemson being favored much less by four and a half. That is a fishy line to me for sure. Uh, I don't know if they know something we don't. Uh, next is uh, Iowa state at Oklahoma. This game was uh, very, a lot more interesting before they both lost uh, multiple games, uh, including Oklahoma losing last week. Um, it's a 61 point total with Oklahoma favored by four. So the projected are Oklahoma 32, Iowa state 28. I think this could be high scoring. I've seen uh, a number of people actually comment about this. You know, Iowa's defense is pretty stout against the one, but a run they're leaky against the pass. We know Oklahoma cannot defend the pass whatsoever. Uh, that's not really ISU's strong suit, but you know Brock Purdy can can put the ball in the air. So I think this could be a, a game to go over, in which case we would definitely want to at least think about some players from this game. Uh, how about Purdue at Northwestern? Another one of these like Big Ten games where it's kind of like, why bother? Yeah, the total here is only 47. Um just like it wouldn't be that hard to just not put Rutgers right. and Northwestern and Iowa on these slates. Like just don't put yeah. those games on these slates. Their Northwestern's applied team total is 18, so it's not like they're sexy. But actually, there's some really interesting plays on Purdue, so I'm not going to dismiss this game entirely. But basically everything I'm interested in here is on the Boilermaker side. Fair enough. I, I would tend to agree with you. FSU at Boston College. FSU don't look now, but they've kind of turned things around. They're four and two in their last six games. They've beaten UNC. They just took down Miami. Um, I I'm not ready to say they're like a good team, but they're certainly playing a lot better. At Boston College is a tough place to play, a tough place to score, and a tough place to win games. Uh, the total here is 54 and a half. Florida State, a slight dog. So the point totals come out to Boston College 28 versus FSU 26. Uh, both of these teams with those point totals are near the bottom, you know, certainly the bottom half of the slate. Um, so I, you know, I, I think at Boston College, just never a very fertile scoring environment. So probably not too interested, but we will uh, keep it in mind. Texas at West Virginia, Texas. Those who just lost to Kansas. What do we say? And Bijan Robinson, RIP, pour one out. 
Yeah, we yeah, losing Bijan this week sucks for for Texas. They're two and a half point dogs. I mean, I like to think that they're a better team than West Virginia, but who even knows at this point? This Texas team is um, in need of a, a makeover, basically. Uh, the total here is at least interesting. It's 56 and a half. I think the running game on each side is really where you want to target this matchup, to, to be honest. I think um, Letty Brown is is interesting, and then um, you know Roshan Johnson, who's replacing Bichon, we think is is the move so even though this game is kind of gross from a college perspective i think that there are some dfs plays that are at least worth worth considering all right uh michigan state at ohio state i think this is definitely going to be a game we put a lot of attention into point total 67 and a half ohio state as per usual has the highest point total on the slate at 43 michigan state at surprisingly low point total, in my opinion, of only 24, you know, considering Ohio State, their pass defense is bad, real bad. Uh, you know, bottom, certainly bottom half. Um, they allow a lot of plays. I kind of uh, I kind of like Michigan State, actually, to be able to do some things uh, through the air. So we'll be talking about this game probably a little bit more as the players come in. Um, Rutgers at Penn State. What are you doing, DraftKings? I don't need Chris, say what you want, but I don't I don't know what, what there is to say. There's nothing to say. The total here is 38 and a half, and both these defenses are at least solid. <laughs> 38 and a half. Are you kidding? That's sorry, low sorry. For- I, I lied. It's four it's 47. Uh, I was looking at the okay. wrong the wrong game. Uh there's a game that's 38. Oh god. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll get there later. I'm sure I have it. Uh um, I'm sure it's next. I'm sure it's yeah, next, actually. Probably. No, Rutgers has the, li- the third lowest implied team total on the slate. So, I mean, there isn't much going on in this game outside and of... there's nothing you want at Penn State. I mean, I guess maybe yeah. Clifford. They can't run I mean, the ball. Yeah, there there's some options on the Penn State side. I think we'll talk about a little bit. But, I mean, this is not a fun game. All right. Next is Iowa, Illinois. That is the dreaded point total of 38.5. Yes. Um. Uh, Illinois, according to the better, the betting spread is uh, over under 12.8. I actually saw um, at stats of war stats. O war. Who's a very smart guy on Twitter. Does a lot of EPA uh, analytics for college football. He actually had Illinois projected for like 5.3 points or something like that in his, uh, in his analysis. So Illinois, don't even think about it. Iowa, I guess if you want to get cute and do like Goodson, but most most likely this game is just why why put it on the slate? You don't. There's there's just better games. Like I don't even know who's watching Iowa Illinois. I don't know. I it can't. It's inexplicable. So just take us to Georgia Tech Notre Dame. This one at least should have some offense. Yeah. Notre Dame is favored by 17 here. The total is 59 and a half. I mean, this isn't a sexy game from like a player perspective, but we're probably going to need to find some value with Notre Dame because their implied team totals 36, 38. I mean, Georgia Tech's defense is just terrible. Just absolutely dreadful. Yeah. It's Um, one of the worst passing defenses in the country, especially. So maybe maybe we don't need... Game manager Jack, or maybe we see competent quarterback Jack. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nebraska at Wisconsin. God, why you uh, just stop putting these defensive teams on the slate? But um, you know, Braylon Allen is is absolutely fan- fantastic. Seventeen year old running back who has now rushed for a hundred yards in like four straight games. Just an absolute beast. Uh, but other than that, probably not a lot going on here. Uh, you don't want to take anyone against the Wisconsin defense on the Nebraska side. In Wisconsin, you don't want anyone other than Braylon Allen. Um, 42-point total, 25 implied for Wisconsin, and 16 implied for Nebraska. So really not what we're looking for. Arkansas at Bama. This one should be a little more fun, Chris. Yeah, Bama. Is favored by 21 here. They expect a lot of the scoring to be on the Crimson Tide side, so there's some value there. Arkansas only has an applied team total of like 18.75 points, so they're mm. 
definitely lower on the slate, but Alabama, Alabama Stevens has been better in recent weeks. So I think this is an interesting matchup. And I think there's a couple of plays that I like on the Alabama side, but Arkansas is probably not a team that I'm jumping to invest in this week. Um, SMU at Cincinnati, the token G5 game. I wish we, we, there's no reason not to put a couple more of these G5 games, but Cincinnati certainly earned it. They're fighting for a spot in the playoff 65 point total. Um, Cincinnati favored by 10 and a half. So theirs is 37 and a half, whereas SMU comes in at only 27, but, uh, you know, SMU is one of the, you know, more, more explosive pass happy offenses in the whole country. Can they get over on the Cincinnati defense? That is a interesting question for this week, because I bet you'll get them at unpopular rostership, uh, for the SMU Mustangs, but do you want to do it against that Cincinnati defense? Uh, and we can look at that later. So then you've got Virginia at Pitt, which is a lot less fun without Brennan Armstrong. Do we know if he's playing? He, I am acting and assuming that he is playing based on the news that I've heard out of, a, out of Virginia this week. It sounds like he's probably going to give it a shot, even if he's a little bit banged up. So it, it does add some excitement to the game. I don't know what, um, his true health status is even if he does play Pitt is favored by 14 and a half that line, I think that line assumes that Armstrong isn't playing at isn't playing or isn't playing at full strength. So, mm. you know, we might find some value in, in Virginia this week, but again, with, with DFS, everybody's going to have that same information. And so you basically take the risk with Brandon Armstrong, whether or not you want to, I think he'll be, uh, probably not highly rostered. So that, that might be a uh, good leverage play, even though, I mean, he's, he's very priced up this week. So you're taking a risk. That's pretty but tough. Yeah. Interesting game. Yeah. I mean, Kenny Pickett's the poster boy for the, the show here. I figured he's earned it. And I mean, when you're going against Virginia, there's a good chance Pickett goes for like 40 points. I mean, Virginia's defense is just bad. Uh, Michigan at Maryland gross man i mean what are we doing how many big 10 games we got michigan maryland nebraska wisconsin illinois iowa rutgers penn state michigan state ohio state that's five purdue northwestern that's six on a freaking 14 game slate half of them are big 10 what are what are we doing DraftKings? what are we doing um yeah so I, don't, anyway. I don't know Anyway, you know, I'll, I'll stop. I know I've really beat that to the ground here, but I don't care about Michigan, Maryland. I don't care about it as a game. I don't care about the players very much. Uh, Michigan, as we've said, it doesn't matter how high their team total is. They do not produce fantasy friendly games. Maybe I take that back. Hassan Haskins with no Blake Corum, you know, we'll look into him, but uh, that'll do it for the slate. Let's get on into the actual players themselves. And as we do, start with quarterbacks. Sam Hartman is now the most expensive player of the whole year, I believe, at 10-3. Uh, is that right? I don't think we've seen anyone over 10-2. Yeah, I don't. So I'm not the Clemson playing. defense. Yeah, I'm not playing him this week. Clemson has a really good defense. Like legitimately, Actually, I mean, that's, one thing, that's the one thing they can do. Yeah, yeah, like a really, really good defense. He he needs to be like a thousand dollars cheaper. Um, yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I don't. I I am not playing him this week. I mean, there are people who might, or he might just be really low rostered with that assumption that Clemson sucks, and maybe he goes off. So he might be an interesting game three play, but he is not somebody that I want to I want to play this week. Just on I'm, the data. I'm not interested at all for, I mean, for 10, three, are you kidding me? Um, no way. Uh, Brendan Armstrong, we touched on him already. I mean, health is the question. I think if he, honestly at 10,000, even if he's healthy, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want him against Pitt at Pitt and also not even at home at Pitt. So I think the top two quarterbacks are actually priced very odd and I'm not interested. Caleb Williams after a stinker, what are you thinking about him? Or do you do you like him coming off a bit of a stinker last week and a loss? Are they going to bounce back? Um, I don't know. It's not the 
easiest matchup in the world is is really my concern. Uh, Iowa State is pretty good. I just well, I, I think their pass defense is better than their run defense. So if Oklahoma yeah, wants is. to take advantage of the weakness, they're going to have to run, which they can't really do. So it's kind of like a going to be a you know Oklahoma's potential weakness on ISU's yeah. strength. Yeah, I don't love Caleb Williams this week. There are better options that are a little bit cheaper. I just I don't yeah. really love Oklahoma right now. I have a lot of questions about that team. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, how are they going to handle the adversity from last week is is obviously something we'll have to see play out. Okay, the next three, I'm kind of interested in all of them. The next four, really. Uh, you've got Bryce Young, Kenny Pickett, CJ Stroud, and Desmond Ritter against SMU. And we have not been playing a lot of Desmond Ritter this year, but against SMU, maybe do we do we unleash Desmond Ritter? I mean, these are four quarterbacks. I'm pretty happy with all of them. I mean, the fact that you don't even have to pay a premium, they're like priced at QB four, five, six on the slate. What's your favorite out of this quartet or, or are you moving elsewhere even cheaper? My favorite play is CJ Stroud. Um, Love it. You have yeah. to. Yeah, I mean Michigan. Michigan State's pass defense is really bad. They allow fifteen point one percent explosive pass rate, which is bottom thirty one. They're at ninety ninth, so bottom thirty one in the country. Um, so their defense can really give up some explosive plays. My second favorite is Bryce Young. I just think that he's solid all around. I the only worry that I have is that they're going to rely on the run game a little bit more. Um, I'm just a little bit scared off of Desmond Ritter. I know that he is producing fine. I just well, I he's fine. Player. He's not great for this matchup. I mean, is this matchup get you on him? I mean, he's in the same tier as two guys I like more. So not necessarily, but I don't think it's a bad matchup. Like, I think you can play him. It's just if you're making a bunch of lineups, yes. If you're only making a couple lineups, probably not. So he's not a. He's not a a target necessarily um yeah. what about Pickett versus virginia i mean are we interested there i guess are, are, yeah, they I gonna mean, run? I, are they gonna run on them i think they're gonna let Pickett chuck it around yeah i think i mean i think we're always interested in him he's just been so productive yeah. um virginia's defense is just bad all around i mean oh sorry. i like everybody in virginia this week yeah it's like an auto start yeah um Okay, then you kind of move down past like all the backups. Uh, you've got KJ Jefferson versus Bama. Nope. I don't love it, but I mean, if you want to do a small a small play in a GPP, he's not going to be rostered at all, and he does have thirty point upside. I know it's Bama, but like with the running, he can run two in, and um, it's certainly worth thinking about. You know, but like you said, he's way down the list of likely outcomes. Man, we love Adrian Martinez, but can't play him against Wisconsin. Jordan Travis is really good. I love Jordan Travis for fantasy. I played him a lot last week. He won me some money against Miami. That turned out really nice for me. Um, you know, his last game, he, he scored how many DraftKings points? Uh, I think he pushed 30. Um, it was... Sorry, I'm, this is bad. Where's the points? I don't know. He, he scored a good amount. Yeah, he scored really nice. Um, <laughs> and he's and he's uh, he's seven thousand. I think he was fifty nine hundred last week. So he's a little bit priced up. It's against Boston College, who's good uh, defensively, but he's run so much. I mean, I love getting the dual threat with Jordan Travis, yeah. Peyton Thorne at seven K. I like him too. Oklahoma, Ohio State's vulnerable to the pass. We just talked about Brock Purdy, I, Iowa State, Oklahoma can't defend the pass at all. So those are three guys in the, at, all at 7K that I like quite a bit. Yeah, I, I like all those as well. I'm going to go a little bit cheaper here and, and give you some some names I like. Are you still um, on Aiden O'Connell? Am I going to have to yes. hear about Aiden O'Connell for like the fifth week in a row? Yeah. Why won't they increase his price? I don't know. Um Northwestern State Northwestern's past defense is actually good, but I don't know if that's a product of like game script and like teams not. No one has to. Yeah, no one has to throw on them. Yeah, so I I'm cool with Aiden O'Connell this week. Um, I all we've we've talked about this, and this is kind of where we're at in the season. 
Bill Yurkovich, Djokovic, depending on like what pronunciation you prefer, is for 4,500 this week. That's insane. Like, this, is mal- this is malpractice. He's played the it last is. two games. Like, come on, DraftKings. Seriously. We we just And he was good last week. He run he ran it in what? He had two rushing or three he had, rushing. He had a phenomenal games. game last week. And that's just, insane. Someone's asleep. Yeah. It's just an insult to our intelligence basically to, to be pricing him like that. He's basically gonna be the most popular player on the slate for uh-huh. like that. So mm-hmm. I just it's just, I mean, I would be remiss if we didn't mention him. It's just frustrating, honestly. You're more not anything. to play him is the question, I guess. I mean, you might yeah, not to avoid it. You can, you can not play him at, in a GPP and say, "Listen, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fade him and uh, assume Garwa goes off and hopefully get leverage on the field." But he's gonna be the, I think he, he's gonna be the highest rostered player this week. Has to be. I have yeah. really no doubt about that. Yeah, it's just because um, of the pricing. It's basically a yeah. pricing error. I mean, it's not even. Yeah, it is. Which is, it, it's incredibly frustrating. Um, I mean, Tate, Tate yeah. Rodemaker, Tate Rodemaker for FSU, who has not, I don't think, taken a snap this year, is 5,800. Like, this was just a mistake. Yeah. No, it's, I do it's, also it's, like, I mean, if. If you're not going to go Djokovic, I think another cheap guy that I like a lot against Rutgers is Sean Clifford. I yep. think Clifford can be pretty good when the competition is bad and Rutgers is bad. Um, I mean, they're just a bad team. They're like okay at defense, I suppose, with their whole chop wood culture and everything like that at Rutgers. But it's keep, away from Rutgers. Keep chopping. Chopping wood. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think they're – like I'm not scared of Rutgers um, – but again, you don't need to play Clifford because you can play Djokovic. So that's just a mistake. I mean, I don't see. It. Yeah, and I like, okay. uh, like I, I, I'll be honest. I like uh, Who? Clifford this week as well. He was good, yeah, Clifford. Yeah. I, yeah, he was my last guy I was going to bring up. So I mean, you could go I, Clifford and Djokovic, and then just like literally every other player you want. Yeah. So so let me let me say this. Um, to win a GPP. You don't have to be different everywhere. So if you want to play Djokovic, you can. But you have to be different somewhere. Clifford mm-hmm. probably isn't going to make you that different. But there are other plays in this slate that will. And I think I think we can kind of talk about them later. But you don't have to avoid Djokovic, Djokovic, whatever. I don't I don't even know how to say his name. Um, I've heard different pronunciations. But you can still play him and, and, and get different and do a couple different things. You just need to make sure that you are differentiating yourself and not playing. Like just be cognizant of that. Basically. Just understand that you, you know, you have to like take a risk elsewhere is the bottom line. Right. Right. Yeah, that's good. Um, All right. Running back. Uh, I didn't even do our little title here. Running backs. Brees Hall against Oklahoma, uh, 9,400. I, I really like Brees Hall always. Uh, you can never go wrong. Oklahoma's run defense has been pretty dang good all season. You also have Kenneth Walker going to, up against o- Ohio State's run defense, who's been also good. That's, you know, it's strength on strength here for both of these teams running the ball against a good run defense. <laughs> Do you want to pay the premium? If you're if you're all cheap at quarterback, you're gonna to have to spend it somewhere. Do you want to spend it here? Um, not this week. I think Oklahoma's front seven is probably better than Iowa State's. Iowa State's front seven has faltered in good matchups. So I don't really want to play Brees this week. I think he's just a little too pricey. So I, I, I think there's a lot of risk in his price, basically. Yeah. Same with Kenneth Walker to me, um, although he yeah, was absolutely. pretty good against Michigan, of course. But uh, I think I think Michigan State's going to – you know, Ohio State's basically a pass funnel. Uh, you just – there's so much worse against the pass, it's almost no point in running the ball. Now, uh, I picked up on a, on a podcast today. Apparently, Mel Tucker is quoted as saying that getting in a shootout makes him want to vomit. So – maybe they try to go with this, like, you know, speed up the game, stop, you know, just like run the ball, let the clock run. Um, I think it's actually a misnomer when people say they want to slow down the game by running the ball. That actually speeds the game up, speeds the clock up, shortens the game. Um, 
So anyway, uh, I don't love that. Brian Robinson against Arkansas. I guess I, I just, it's I never want to play Brian Robinson. Like what's wrong with me? I just like never want to play him. I don't know why he's like the guy now. I mean, they're not going to give it to anyone else yeah. really. No. Um, I don't know. He's not just not a sexy name and I think they're just better values. So, but he's fine. Like he, I, I think he's going to get you 20 to 25 points, but I don't think he has like, GPP winning upside is the bottom line. Like you want to play cash, he's a great cash play. Yeah, and we do play a lot of GPPs, so just like be aware of that when we're talking about stuff. Arkansas, you know, if they have a strength on defense, it is the run. Um, I kind of do think that like it'll be the Bryce Young show again. Bijan, RAP, love you. Get well soon. Braylon Allen against Nebraska, you got to like it. They didn't even increase his price that much after he went for, what, three touchdowns last week? I mean, he was like 82, now he's 86. They want to feed this guy 25 carries. He even got a 25-yard reception last week, I think. Uh, He's like a – he's all you want in a bell cow, and you don't even have to pay 9K. Nebraska is okay defense. That's the – problem that i have they're okay like they, yeah they're not a total yeah. pushover but, but they're best on the run like they rank 18th or uh, 19th in explosive rush rate and 26th in DP, defensive epa per rush attempt so like i think there's a risk that allen goes for like 100 and a touchdown which right. that's not obviously not a bad game but like it's not a game that that you need to again, take down a GPP, which is, I, I think, our goal in a lot of these conversations. So that's he's true. fine. I mean, that's, that's a great point. That's Yeah. Trevor and Henderson, uh, again, I mean, it's just kind of like the Michigan State run defense. If they have a strength, it's their strength. Do you want to play a, a running back against the strength? Now, the nice thing about Henderson is he's going to catch three or four passes probably. So, you know, he can beat you in multiple ways. I, I don't have a problem with it. I guess it's just – um it's not optimal to me optimal might be like a couple of the next few guys here jerome ford i don't know is he gonna play he did not play against south know. florida they might want him i mean they may have held him out because it was south florida yeah this is big game it's hard to say if he I hate, I mean, I, I just fade college injuries. Like you don't know, even if he yeah. gets dressed, you know, maybe he's a 50, 50, if they're, if they're up comfortably, maybe they're not going to play him because they know they'll need him. Should they make the playoffs? I probably would not mess with Jerome Ford myself. I really like Kyron Williams against Georgia tech, just because it's Georgia tech. I really like Hassan Haskins against Maryland. Cause it's Maryland. So those are two guys that you don't have to pay the super premium but I think you can get really nice production, 20 plus touches, multiple touchdown upside. I mean, Haskins got three touchdown upside as any yeah. of these guys. He's got as much upside as any of these guys. For sure. No, he does. With Cor- um, I mean, as long as Corm's out, which I think he is still going to be out. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that he's going to play this week. Um, um, we like those guys. You know, Kyron Williams catches four or five passes a game. Haskins has three touchdown upside for the Michigan offense. But then after that, Brooks, Josh Corbin for uh, against Boston College again. Don't love it. Will Shipley against Wake Forest. No, no for you. Okay. Yeah. Wake Forest is actually not horrible against the rush, but I like Corbin. Um, to, to be honest, Boston College is, is pretty weak against the rush. So I think that he he's pretty interesting. He's Same not, reason I like Jordan Travis. Yeah, I do like Jordan Travis better than – I mean, Corbin just, like, doesn't seem to have those, like, big, big games in him. I mean, he's, like, 85 yeah. and a touchdown. But, you know, maybe like a Braylon Allen, like what we thought Braylon Allen would do. Now it is less money than Braylon Allen. But, yeah, Boston College is actually pretty, pretty bad against the run, actually. So that's a, that's a good point there. Oh man, um, you know Letty Brown. Yes, really cheap. He's my favorite running back play this week. He's so cheap. I don't. Texas get it. can't stop the run. Texas sucks. 
I don't get it. No. Jackpot. 6,200. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't understand it. I love Lightning Brown this week. Yeah. He's my favorite. He is my favorite running back play by by a, probably a long shot. That's a honest. yeah, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, it is. All right, anybody else? Anybody else cheaper? I mean, I think we both concur. Letty Brown's the the, the jam this week for sure. Uh, uh, I I have a couple. I think Roshan Johnson is interesting. Um, West Virginia has a pretty good rushing defense, but he is going to be the bell cow. Us, uh, we uh, the assumed bell cow in Bijan's absence. So, I mean, I I do think that he's worth a stab at thirty eight hundred. 30, yeah, 3,800. Um, Xander Horvath at Purdue. He came back last week, is his first action back, but I think he's going to be healthier this week. And Northwestern is a bottom five team against the Rush. He's 3,400. I think he's probably going to out touch um, the King, uh, King Doru. So I, I really like Xander Horvath at, at 3,400 this week. I think you can ha- get some really, really nice leverage with him. Yeah. Um, and I think Israel Abanaconda um, is another guy that I, I really, really like this week. It's just a really good matchup for him. And he's kind of taken hold of, of the backfield in terms of being the RB one. So, yeah. And he's priced down. He's 5,300. So I, I, I think that Abanaconda is getting a bottom five, 10 to five rushing defense. And 5,300 is a great price for him. So there's some good cheap running backs in this slate, I think. Oh, man, it's like, how do you choose? Um, uh, all right. Yeah. I, I like Abanaconda because he, he definitely, when he, you know, he's not going to necessarily give you 20 carries, but he will catch three to four passes, which, uh, you know, you're basically going to get 20 touches uh, for 5,300 against a bad defense. I mean, that's that's tough to that's tough to beat, man. Haskins, Williams, Brown, freaking Abanaconda. Like, I like a lot of these plays here. So we like a lot of discount quarterbacks. We like a lot of discount running backs. Do we pay up for receivers? Let's move on to those guys. Um, Dotson probably have no problem with Dotson. I mean, a Dotson Clifford stack is, is kind of appealing against Rutgers. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, he just is, he's just dominating really like that, that yeah. Penn state target share. I mean, he's just running away with it far and away. And and so with 46 targets over his last three games, I mean, you just basically write him off and say, okay, he's going to get 12 game. Just see what you can do with it. And that's where Rutgers is the weakest. So I think you absolutely, he's absolutely in play, just 100%. Yeah. Uh, I don't really want either Wake Forest receiver against Clemson, like we already talked about. I mean, Clemson's defense is just too good to pay the premium here. Um, Dontavian Wicks at Pitt. I don't think I like anyone on Virginia, really, against Pitt. I mean, especially if Brendan Armstrong isn't 100%. But even if he is, I just, again, it's a premium against a really good defense. Um. Smith and Jigba is interestingly the most expensive Ohio State receiver, and maybe with good reason. The guy's leading the team in yards, receptions. I mean, it's wild. Uh, a true sophomore dominating uh, a room with two other first round draft picks, potentially. Um, but I do probably want an OSU receiver. I guess the question yeah. is which which one do you do you want? Smith Jigba, or do you want? Uh, I mean, look how low price Garrett Wilson's down at 6,800 and Olave's at 64. I think I want Garrett Wilson. We, I mean, we've stand Garrett Wilson all year. Yeah, I'm playing Garrett Wilson of this of this trio. I think Chris Olave is the wide receiver three there currently. I think Wilson is probably the wide receiver one. I mean, he did miss a game with a concussion, so it's that's right. He's been, um, I mean, he and he got knocked out of the game. So uh, he's still the guy that I think I want, and that you're getting a eleven hundred dollar discount off JSN. So I, I think he's got you want here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like that. And then um, Jamison Williams has been actually amazing for 
uh, for Bama. Uh, speaking of Ohio State wide receivers, I mean, he comes in from from Ohio State and transfers to Bama, and I thought he'd be an afterthought, and he's like their wide receiver one over Mechie almost. So pretty wild. Uh, do you want him against Arkansas? Why not? I like, mean, yeah. at this point, like, why not just play him? Like, Ar- Arkansas's past events is fine. Um, they're like, it, it doesn't tell the same story necessarily. Like, they're limiting opponents to 167 pass yards, but it's like a like a 30 to 40th ranked pass defense in terms of success mm-hmm. rate and like EPA. So, I'm not scared off by them, but. I mean, I absolutely think you could play Jamison Williams. I have no, I have no issue doing so this week. Yeah, Alec Pierce against SMU. I mean, again, we just—it's. I don't know. I don't know what to do with Cincinnati offensive pieces, even against SMU. I think they'll probably be chalky because people are just going to want yeah. SMU. It might be a reasonable strategic fade, to be honest, because uh, everyone's going to see SMU and just think it's jackpot city. Xavier Hutchinson against Oklahoma is certainly. Very interesting. Although I may go uh, like Kohler. Uh, I think I want a piece of the Cyclones versus that atrocious Oklahoma pass defense. Um, oh, I'm, I'm on the other side of that. I don't want any anyone in the uh, Iowa State passing game. I oh, really? I talked about this uh, on the tailgate, but Oklahoma's, Oklahoma should, ha- should have all of their missing pieces. So they were missing five pieces from their secondary. Okay. Over the last like six or seven weeks, and they should have them all back this week. They got like five of them back last week, and it showed. Like they shut down Baylor's passing offense. So, I I, I think that Oklahoma. What what's the opposite of a paper tiger? Like a a marble <laughs> a marble a marble dove? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah like a a, mar, a marble dove. I I think that they are. You heard it for. <laughs> yeah that's wild um okay well no i think that's not unreasonable uh i like i like that angle for sure i guess i had it wrong just uh maybe o- oklahoma comes back and looks like a great pass defense um i mean we gotta oh gosh i mean it's like uh let's see mechie i think 7400 isn't really what i want to do for him david bell against northwestern i mean gotta yeah. like that Absolutely. Uh, he's underpriced. Yeah, I mean, he, um, he has the highest upside of any wide receiver on the slate. Yeah. And he's, he's kind of been underpriced. Um, yeah. No, he has. Absolutely. And, and Northwestern's passing defense ranks. Is okay. High, we talked about that. We yeah. talked about that earlier with Sean Clifford. Like it's more of a product of the game scripts that they've been playing. In. Mm-hmm. Uh, Xavier Worthy coming off three touchdowns. I mean, the kid's awesome. He's a true freshman just playing out of his mind. Uh, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I, I don't think he's a target. Um, yeah, Burks, always, always a threat for 30 points just because he can, like, break huge, you know, explosive plays. But I think Bama, if you lock down one person on, Oklahoma, on, on Arkansas, I mean, you lock down Burks. Zay Flowers, if you like Jerkovich, would you would you stack with Flowers? That makes a lot of sense. And was yeah. it last week he went off or two weeks ago? He was great recently. I mean, he's been good a lot. He's been good the last two weeks. Um, well, he only had know. two catches, but both were touchdowns. He went two for 87 yeah. in a t- last week. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing him. He's he, he, It's a different offense right now, so I, I, I like him. And he's under 7K. I think that's a pretty good value. You. He's yeah, 23 sure. targets in his yeah, 23 targets in his last three games, and nobody else, none of the other starting wide receivers have more than four. Like yeah. that t- kind of tells but if you're gonna play Jerkovich, I mean it makes sense. Although you're playing Jerkovich yeah. not necessarily to stack just because he's freaking 4500 yeah. Um yeah, I mean Jaden Reed's interesting at 6500 I think that's a pretty cheap price for him. Uh, especially against an Ohio State defense that can be had through the air. I think it's interesting. I mean, it's it's just, I don't know. I mean, he's coming off eight for 114 and two. Like, he's so good, I think. I think he's, like, really a good player. Um, they're going to have to throw, I think. Don't, don't you think so? 
Yeah. But would um, you rather have Garrett Wilson or Jaden Reed? I mean, they're similar I, price point. It a lot of it's going to depend on whether or not Jalen Naylor plays this week. Mm. Um, because he's missed the last couple games. So that makes sense. Yep, that's true. Yeah, if Naylor doesn't play, then I'm probably going Reed. But at, I I'm assuming he does. It sounds like he will. So I I prefer Garrett Wilson, but. I mean, I think you can play. I still think you could play Jaden Reed because I, uh, I think he's the preferred run back in this situation because Ohio State's pass defense is still not quite gotten it together. But I, I like in terms of that question, who do I prefer? I think I still prefer Gary Wilson. Yeah, me too. Um, all right, anybody else as you go super deep? I have a, a very deep play. I guess you already mentioned Horvath uh, when we were talking about running backs, 3,400. Um, against Northwestern, I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Yeah. I I really I really like that one. Um, Parker Washington at at four thousand, yep. I think, is really interesting. Um, twenty two targets in his last three, so he's definitely getting the volume that we want to see. I don't really trust the Rutgers' pass defense. I think that's their weakest unit. They're giving them up an explosive pass rate of thirty point six percent, and and uh, yards per pass attempt at 8.38 both bottom 20 or bo- both bottom 33 numbers so I, I i like um him as a leverage play off of dotson um i like i like michael young jr at in cincinnati uh so smu secondary is probably like one of the worst in the country and i don't mm-hmm. want to pay all the way up for alec pierce who's seven seventy six hundred. so at 3,600 cheaper. I like Michael Young. He has 12 targets to Pierce's 18 in the last three. So I think that he's probably the wide receiver two there. And if you think this game could be high scoring and it, 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 it's our third highest total on the slate, then I think he's somebody that you can get at 4K and, and maybe pay off a little bit. Um, last one I really like is Jared Wayne, and he's 4,300. He has 24 targets in his last three games. Um, Jordan Addison is obviously the wide receiver one here, and I like Addison this week uh, uh, as well. But Wayne at 4,300 is definitely the leverage play off of Addison. If we think that Brandon Armstrong is going to play, again, second highest uh, uh, game total on the slate. So Jaron Wade's a guy I have a lot of interest in. If we think that Armstrong is going to play and this game could go a little bit back and forth. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like Addison. It's hard not to play him. Um, cause he's not that priced up, uh, just messing around. You know, I'd built the lineups Clifford Haskins, Letty Brown, Dotson, Wilson, Addison, Horvath, Jerkovich. And that leaves you with $0 left on the table. So even with Clifford and Jerkovich, I mean, you still got to make some decisions like you, I mean, Dotson's the most expensive receiver, but you really can't have everybody, even with the super cheap quarterbacks. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. But that's pretty nice. I mean, the other guys you can flip in and out would be like, maybe you don't go, you know, for instance, if you've got this kind of backbone of your lineup, would you want Haskins in there? Or would you flip out Haskins for like a and then, uh, you know, pay up Horvath to somebody else because you could save twenty three hundred off Haskins if you go Abanaconda instead. I actually think I'd rather pay Abanaconda like straight up and Haskins. So yeah, I I agree with that. And Horvath Horvath does have risk. Like I don't want to act like he doesn't because he did not get the. More oh yeah, I mean he might not get too much. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but at his price, I really I really like him. But you don't have to be playing him like he's not a yeah. primary target he's just a guy you can target um to save a little bit of a little bit of dough so um yeah i, I think what you said there like you can you can pivot and, and pay up and maybe get a little bit better of an option i think that's the way to do it yeah i'm kind of looking here to see i don't know i don't know where you can move up to but anyway well that that should do it for us um you know we will be live on Saturday morning. Don't forget to check in to the tailgate. We'll give you new th- new ideas we've come up with over the course of the week uh, as we go through some 
you know, Chris and I are both going to going to be talking about some lines and some prize picks. And as we kind of go through that, it kind of colors a little bit more of what we think about the draft king slate as well. So we will have new ideas on Saturday morning as we work through this slate a little bit. Um, so tune in for that. Uh, you know, follow campus to We'll tweet out when we're live. And then uh, also check out all the good written stuff we have at, on the website if you haven't already. Um, yeah, I mean, without further ado, I guess that's that's me. I'm Alfred. And I'm Chris, and I'm interested in winning money. And this was Why Wait Till Sunday.